Oh, I your shotgun stuff, too. Yeah. The only way the middle one's going to try and get a shot is yeah. right behind uh, so yeah, get out this way. Well, hopefully the audio's on and he's already recording. Yeah. Is what he, he is. Because okay. uh, our audio is on right now. We just did a video shot as well. Oh, okay. okay. With your SAT, you I want to do an of that. I'll show that too. Bro, oh, the whole, yeah. Do you want to talk to Do you guys have any questions? Yes. We have all the questions. <laughs> do you have a list? I mean, uh, maybe. Uh, first of all, just to uh, give you a little background on, on what we do. So we have a podcast that's all about uh, home manufacture and mostly 3D printing firearms. Okay. So first we wanted to kind of get like, what do you guys, how do you guys feel about that? How do you feel like if any kind of regulation there will be for that ever, or if it's even possible to regulate that? Oh, yes. All right, well, so we have a podcast we run, and it's all about 3D printed and home manufactured firearms. And so basically what we're, we're looking for is, like, what do you guys think is the future of firearms in that uh, realm? And do you think if there's any regulation that is going to uh, maybe, maybe try to stop that or hinder it? As far as regulation, making your own firearms yeah. is, will stay the same as what it is now. That, that's not yeah. going to change. Um, the only time anything would be serialized or any kind of components like that is if you would put that into transferring or selling other firearms. Nothing else is going to change that. Okay. I think 3D printing, the, the emerging technology, that, that's going to continue. We actually have uh, our, our division has branched off into some of the emerging technology. So we have uh, quite a few 3D printers now. They're starting to print that kind of stuff, try to figure out where the future may be with it. Um, not necessarily with the firearms, but... Uh, Conversion devices it is more where we're looking at. Is one point conversion. Like the guy in New York with the 60 uh, Yankee Boogles that sold. Right. Uh, when we're dealing with anything that may be uh, TCDTRs or lock switches or chips or things like that, that's where we're looking at 3D printed wise. Um, but the firearm side of it, it's that's been there where you can always manufacture any firearm. None of yeah. that's going to change. So we're, we're, we're looking at on the FFL side as if when that when that is a firearm and it's because of the sale and transfer of it yeah. and whether or not backgrounds are being done for different people yeah for sure do you see 3d printing as a, a gateway for like for people to manufacture these parts you're talking about switches dropping auto suits do you see this like being a bigger problem um i know a lot of that stuff comes in in chinese companies and there's a lot of like russian websites and people are ordering this stuff on the mail and you always see people posting this stuff on social media all the time but do you view 3D printing as a threat? Like, uh, not necessarily a threat, but more as like a, a causeway for that kind of stuff to just become more prolific? Well, absolutely. When it first got started, you're talking about every now, a couple people may have known about this or had to file for it. Now that stuff's on, on, on every site. You're talking about social media. If, if you put the means out there, people are going to take advantage of those means, um, especially ones that wouldn't have means to that unless it was through illegal activity. They would right. not have it. Right. So guys, we really aren't supposed to be doing interviews. You're putting Chris here in a horrible spot. And as you see, he's a really good guy. But yeah. we have a PGA department that okay. can set up any of that. Hopefully you got some good information, but please do not burn my one of my best FBOs to the ground. Okay. No, not a No, he's no. actually, we're, we're, not a we're, we're pretty happy with what he's right. saying yeah, to yeah, us. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Not a yeah. hit piece at all. Guys. No, yeah. So for the most part, so we're pretty active in the 3D printing community. Yeah. Yeah. I can tell you, I've been around for about three years. And for the most part, People are aware of these files, like the drop in auto series. No, nobody wants to touch that stuff. Most people believe they even try to print it, and you guys are going to be banging on their door because you're watching the G code off the printer. Like, for the most part, people are really not going to print this stuff. Uh, I mean, criminals do whatever the hell they want anyway. But, you know, laws don't really apply to criminals. Right. Thanks yeah. a lot, guys. We really yeah, appreciate it. it. You guys want to see some cool stuff, though? Sure. So, um,. We like signaling devices because we can't own 40 millimeter stuff. So uh, we have some stuff like this that shoots 37 millimeter, which is the co commercial off the shelf firework rounds. And then uh, this is what happens when you don't put enough black powder in your firework round. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> no, but yeah, so my 37 millimeter stuff, I get to shoot in my cul de sac. So, and my kids love it. Show them the set me. Yeah. We'll get there. The right if my video. iPad would work. So what's your guys' view on like 37 millimeter signaling style stuff? 
like we know we have the letter, the 37, uh, as long as it's not anti-personnel right. type stuff, not shooting at people. And right? not rifle, too. It's got to be a smooth bore, because rifle means pin target, or point target, yeah, yeah. versus single. For yeah, yeah. Okay. Cool. They discovered that the chain link fence post available at Lowe's is like the perfect size for the barrel. 37 millimeter. It's, it's ideal. It's not it's rifle. ideal. There's so much fun to shoot fireworks out of. So this is a, a 3D printed set me from a, a part a D milled parts kit that's gonna be D milled for semi auto fire, and uh, we shot a thousand rounds through it in one uh, hot August afternoon in Austin, Texas. And it's still flawless. I mean, we, there was functioning problems, but, but there's also team, functioning problems. You know, there's the problems end. in the actual set me too, though. That's so right, right, right. And the goal of that was, you know, this design hadn't been released to the public yet, so it's well. Let's make sure it's safe. You got to put at least a thousand rounds through it in one day before these guys will even say it's safe for somebody else to print and release to the internet. <laughs> yeah, and then um, so the some uh, local guys came out while we were doing this and they had a good time. They wanted to make sure we were shooting on 10 acres minimum. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot guys. Hey, I appreciate you. it. Thanks. You said. All right guys, we're live from SHOT Show here. They said it wouldn't happen, but it happened. We went and confronted the ATF, told them our concerns about home building guns. They assured us that home building your firearm will remain the same legal it always is. Hell yeah, dude.